Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, a lot's going on in the world of boxing, and there's a very important article that I hope all hardcore fans take a hard look at that's posted today, July the 9th, 2014, on BoxingScene.com. It's by a longtime sports columnist I followed for years, Mark Wicker. I believe Mr. Wicker used to write for the Orange County Register. I lived in Orange County many years ago. Right now, let me say this. In the article, Wicker quotes Brandon Rios. Now understand, Rios failed a drug test after the Manny Pacquiao fight. Understand, Rios at the time had a nutritionist, Alex Arisa. Understand that Arisa used to be the nutritionist for some of the biggest names in boxing. Manny Pacquiao, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Amir Khan, among them. Right now, I believe Brandon Rios' statements should open eyes to the plausible deniability going on in boxing. Right? By plausible deniability, these fighters have a host of people around them helping them do different things, right? In an earlier generation, we call them an entourage, right? These fighters understand that there are rules in place that prohibit certain things, right? You can't, you know, take certain substances. You can't take PEDs, right? That's illegal in preparing for a fight. You can't take certain diuretics. It's a weight-based sport. Right? Fights are at a contracted weight class. The titles are based on weight distinctions. I can't take things that are going to artificially lower my body weight so I can make weight at the weigh-in, the designated time when I need to weigh the contracted weight, and then, of course, gain all the way back after the weigh-in, right, after I have already used a prohibited drug to make weight. Well, Brandon Rios failed a drug test after the Manny Pacquiao fight, and there seems to be some talking points that many people are using to make sure they don't cast a negative light or expose themselves to legal liability by the nutritionists that they have chosen not to work with, right? And there seems to be some code. What I want you to do is I want you to compare and contrast Brandon Rios's statements to Robert Garcia's statements. Garcia, of course, has decided not to have Alex Ariza work with any of his fighters, right? And what you're going to find is what you find in political campaigns where they give politicians talking points, right? Party leadership will get together and will say, okay, how can we put our spin on this story? And they'll give people talking points and send them out on the morning talk shows, right? What you have now in boxing are people getting together, getting their story straight, right? These are, in a sense, co-conspirators. Right? They'll, they'll get their story straight. It's a public sport with fans. Then they'll release their comments to the media. So, right now what you have is a change taking place in boxing. The fighters understand that publicity-wise, legacy-wise, they cannot afford to fail a drug test. Right? They understand that some nutritionists who before the public did not know about 
now are generating bad publicity for them. Now, in the case of Alex Ariza, are being called shady by high-profile people like Freddie Roach. So here's the quote from Alex Ariza in the Mark Wicker piece on BoxingScene.com right now. And it's a good one because, of course, Wicker actually quotes Brandon Rios, right? And quotes Robert Garcia by name. You don't see that that often. Many of these articles have sources. This has cited quotations. Here's the quote from Brandon Rios. I'm still cool with Alex. When I see him, I say, what's up and all that. But when I was winning fights, I didn't have a strength and conditioning coach. I had Memo Heredia. By the way, that's Marquez's strength and conditioning coach. Let me continue. And I lost, in parentheses, to Mike Alvarado. Close parentheses. I had Alex and I lost, in parentheses, to Manny Pacquiao, close parentheses. Those guys are good at what they do. It just might not be the best thing for me. End of quote. Now my point to you is simply, what's wrong with strength and conditioning? Right? If you have a strength and conditioning coach and you're a professional athlete in a sport that quite frankly has parts of it where strength and conditioning matter. Right? You're in the later rounds, you need to be strong, you need to have stamina. My question is, if Alex Ariza and Memo Heredia are good at what they do. That's Brandon Rios's line. If they're good at what they do, then why would a fighter not choose to work further with them? Think about it. Isn't there something here that we're not hearing about. Doesn't it seem that way? So Wicker also quotes Robert Garcia. By the way, the phrase, and I want you to Google Garcia quotes from the past. The phrase, they are good at what they do, is almost verbatim from what Robert Garcia has said in earlier interviews. Right, folks? In my opinion, these really are talking points. Well, here's the quote from, Mar from Robert Garcia in the Wicker piece. He says, Brandon felt heavy, looked heavy, and really didn't have as much power. It's something that we tried and it didn't work. Right? Well, all I'm saying is this looks awfully smoky to me. You know the saying, where there's smoke, there's fire? This looks awfully smoky to me. Now, I don't think that Brandon Rios, the fighter, who specializes in fighting or Robert Garcia the trainer who specializes in being a superstar trainer fully know everything about nutrition I don't think they fully have been advised or fully grasp everything that the 
hired nutritionist is doing or is giving to the fighter right that's the plausible deniability part of it right you know that some of these nutritional experts have had success with other fighters as I've said look in to the background of Alex Ariza and who he's worked with he's had a great career look at Memo Heredia who is one of the people named by Brandon Rios as a nutritionist he worked with and moved on from and quite frankly Heredia has had a great career right not as long as Alex Ariza's not as distinguished as Alex Ariza's in boxing but still he has a fighter right now who is at the top of the mountain right now all I'm saying is it's interesting that you have experienced fighters like Rios and experienced trainers like Garcia who fully believe that these strength and conditioning coaches are good at what they do but yet they don't want to work with them think about it right Brandon Rios is basically telling you I'm still cool with Alex okay great he just doesn't want to work with Alex why is that right reach your own conclusions but just understand that boxing seems to be self-regulating right now I personally believe this is the best kind of regulation and just understand that many high-profile boxers right now are reconsidering their relationships with their strength and conditioning coaches and if you don't believe that there hasn't been widespread use of strength and conditioning coaches among elite fighters I encourage you to just do some Google searches and figure out the names of all of the fighters that just Alex Ariza has worked with right what I also want you to do because the information is here online for legal reasons I'm not even gonna give you my take what I want you to do is to investigate the subject and come to your take take a look at Victor Conti's comments about Brandon Rios's failed drug tests in Macau right understand that Victor Conti who worked with Barry Bonds in baseball now has several high-profile clients in boxing well, I'm not here to cast dispersions on Victor Conti who I believe has turned his life around right Victor Conti has been on Twitter giving an <laughs> exemplar quite frankly he's been giving a roadmap on Twitter to the kind of drugs that are illegal and why the current drug testing as sanctioned by the state boxing commissions here in the United States are inadequate I really do believe Victor Conti has turned his life around and is probably on the right side of the line in boxing but what I also believe is that a guy like Victor Conti has an idea on what's going on in the sport right and I believe Victor Conti understands that with inadequate testing anything is possible so when you see a successful partnership where the fighter is winning fights looking explosive right looking spectacular as have many of Alex Ariza's past clients and when you find out that those relationships no longer exist that the fighter has moved on from Alex Ariza 
And when you're reading quotes like the Brandon Rios quote in the Wicker piece, where the fighter is saying, I'm still cool with Alex. But then as you read deeper into the article, you find out the fighter just doesn't want to work with him. And when you find out the fighter's trainer thought that the fighter looked heavy, that's the quote, looked heavy, right? I think we as fight fans deserve the opportunity to ask ourselves what's really going on here. If the nutritionist is good at what he or she does, why doesn't the fighter want to continue working with them? That's today's million dollar question. Let me know your thoughts. Let's talk about it here online. Just be careful with the comments. Just be mindful of defamation laws. Let me add a disclaimer to this video. I'm not saying here that I know or that I want people to believe that anyone in boxing gave anyone else PDs or illegal substances. Rather, what I'm saying is a bit more nuanced. I see a lot of smoke here. I see enough smoke where fans need to ask themselves what's going on, right? Who fires a great employee or a great independent contractor who is good at what they do? other than all of these boxers and trainers recently. What's the reason for the end of the business relationship between many of these fighters and many of these high-profile strength and conditioning coaches? Given the success the fighters have had in the sport, given the high-profile fighters have in the sport, I think it's a question we need to always ask. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.